Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and today we got a special one. Round two of Streamer League, we beat Filippo last Friday, and now we're playing against my good friend Mythic Matt. Matt it made the MI the Mythic Championship last one for Zendikar, played there. He is a savant at Doom Foretold, um, and one of my test partners, uh, leading up to a lot of our MIQ. Uh, so very good player. We're going to be playing a best of five match where we each bring in three decks. Once you lose with the deck, it gets knocked out. Uh, we're playing Teamer Ramp. In standard, more of a control-based version, Boros Ugin ramp, and Salt Eye Ultimatum, two of the decks played last time, one switch up. Matt's on Gruel Adventures, Doom Foretold, and Jeskai Control. So we got Matt, and we're going to be trash-talking him throughout on Discord. Um, so we'll see if he's ready to go, and we can start this first round. Starting with Doom, or is this just uh, 80 card Jeskai? Keeping you uh, in suspense, you'll have to wait and see until I play my first land. That line doesn't help at all. I was just saying that. I don't know how good your dooms are going to be with a deck with no permanence in it, other than lines. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> well, my win con's on the board now. Let's see that conquer's death. You know it. Do you play around Embercleave? I had to think about it. <laughs> Thank you. 
feels bad with Solemn, but I don't think I'm going to get a better target for this extinction event. Yeah, for sure. What are the choices, Matt? This isn't so bad. Round two. I don't like this one bit, Joe. When everything's a one of in your deck, it's fun. Yeah, these are pretty powerful cards. Okay, hear me out, Matt, one more time. No. <laughs> but I want a hard cast shark typhoon. I'm sure you do.
So here we're going to be playing out the shark. We'll attack in. I think at this state, we just try to hard cast here. Actually, we probably just hold up, to be honest. He's pretty much dead. If we, he needs to answer this. I can heartless act there, his shark. So now he needs an answer. So really what we try to do here is just control the board, go from that angle. He goes Amiria's call. It's probably fine because now we just go So two, five, seven. All right, nice one, Joe. Good games, too many sharks, too many sharks. Too many sharks to keep up with. So here we're gonna just want like all our kind of anti-control style cards. These Elspeth's Nightmares aren't gonna do much. Et Extinction's fine. The Gargaroth's not that great. Ugin's another answer. Kiora's. Sea God could come out. It's also not that good. We can get rid of the Eliminate. I still think we want Heartless Act, but if they get it back with Yorian, then it's not that great. So maybe we trim one of these. Mind you, we probably have enough targeted removal. Actually, we can keep one of these. Just go down to one Wilt. Just go like that. Welcome those just tuning in. We are up a game in the first match against Mythic Matt, where he's on Jeskai Control, we're on Saltai Ultimatums. Let's see what you have going on here. Sublime Epiphany. I was just saying, we got a couple ways to counter your ultimatums, so thankfully we've got more than one. Well, good thing I have more than one. Rude, Joe. Very rude. Why not three? Joe, did you surpass the four card limit? Let's get rid of your epiphany here. They wouldn't let me skew up Thoughtseize. At least we dodged that one.
So we're in a little bit of an awkward spot because I'm gonna kill this, but then they can he could just go Yorian. So it makes it a little tricky just in terms of like I wouldn't mind like having some sort of counter spell, even just solemn or something. Okay, if he's gonna go Yorian, that's fine. The thing is, he does have this Conqueror's Death to eventually get Yorin back. I think at this point, Cultivate's too late. Just try to keep our life total high enough here. We're going to try to resolve the Seagate Restoration. It's not going to give us a lot of cards, but it is something. So we have triple green. We're still a bit short of the ultimatum turn. He's going to kind of want to keep that Conqueror's Death. If we can draw a shark, it's actually pretty good as well. Love to see that no value. Just means that my hand is full of value, Joe. Turns out when you keep three lands, three du or, or three lands, three duress, you don't get much action after that. That's what I like to hear. Hey, McEvo, how's it going? Yep, yeah, back. We're up a game against Matt. Um, in the first match. This game, we tripled Duress to open up, but I haven't seen much outside of that. We're going to cycle this, see if we can find some action. Let's see, escape cost on this. Excel five cards. So you can do it again at instant speed if he wants. He might go shields down this turn. Shark Typhoon's actually really nice here. Gives us something to do this turn when we have the tax up. So we need another blue here. He might have negate. So we probably want to get a counter spell out of him this turn. So that way I can uh, Seagate Restoration next turn. So he still has the option of Glimpse of Freedom. He's counting out our mana. He's checking. It's triple green, Matt, in case you're wondering. Good to know. I was actually speculating over whether you've got counter magic or not. You have the negate. I like the looks of this for us. I'm the only one who can play ultimatums. 
was just saying, that's the better version of Seagate Restoration. I'm trying, it just takes nine cards to assemble. He most likely has a counter spell at this point. My thoughts get this out. All right, you got second ultimatum? I wish. So we got to see here. We got to try to sneak this down. He's got four. He's got five mana up. So he's probably trying to dig for a counter spell. The thing is, like, I don't even know what we get in this situation. We already lost our Gargaroth, which gets us life. I guess I could Bane a Gala. So we've seen one dispute, two disputes, three disputes. Does he have the full four? This is a very real question. So what are we getting here? Yeah, on European time. Um, so I can get Shark Typhoon, Seagate, can do cling to dust, gain some life. Don't think I really like that. So how much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we just do this. Try to draw some cards. It's hit or miss with the, the view counts. Because we get Seagate, we get... Okay, so it goes Amiria's Call. Let's draw a card here. So I'm actually going to do this for one. I don't want him to draw a card here. And then I'm going to do the extinction event. So we'll try to do this, see if we could sneak it in. Doing this before counters. You digging? You know it.
So we have the dispute. He probably has like enough mana, but if we can try to get into like a counter war this go around. Especially if he's gonna be playing out Conqueror's Death here. He doesn't have anything in the graveyard anyways, he's just trying to tax us. So I've liked these frantic inventories just because they scale well to drawing multiple cards. Plus it's something we can target afterwards with the Emergent Ultimatum. I think we still have the Wilt, do we? No Wilt's in the graveyard. So we could get Bane of Gala fed. Bane, Bala Ged Recovery. Unless we draw it. Okay, so here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think we go for it. We go dispute here. I've didn't realize he had the mana. Well, let's see what he shuffles in here now. So I wanted to get the Wilt. He's at 45 cards, we're at 28. He does put the tax on us this turn. He's likely going to have all his counter spells again. I drew into the negate as well. Oh, rough. I miscounted. I missed uh, one of your lands, so I didn't realize you had dispute pay back up. Yeah, they're all like different lands, so I've definitely done that before too. So I think. I think we actually want the Gargaroth. Maybe the this gets hit by dispute. So in this matchup, because he makes the tokens, we probably just run it back. To be honest, hope for a better draw. I built this deck to like prey on creature decks, so it's like I'm surprised I even got game one, just because it's so like heavily slanted for like removal heavy. Yeah, I think mine is somewhat similar because I do have a lot of like uh, removal spells. I took out a lot of cards in sideboarding, obviously. So sounds pretty good. Just want lines at this point, so I can go. We probably, I probably frantic inventory this turn and then duress next turn. Set this to block. Give it some more time to see what he plays. Having the cling will actually be pretty good just to take out stuff in the graveyard. Actually drawing another one of those is great. Let's see what you got. It's a pretty good one. There are cards that interact with my board. I'm not a fan of those. So I kind of want to see if we could bait him into using this. But we'll probably just frantic inventory first. 
I want him to like tap this down. Oh, we can do that next turn then, because we can hit the Nar set as well. So I think we actually cultivate here, get ahead on mana, I have this dispute up. So we can use probably another green. I love when I draw my one of cultivate. It's a good spot to draw it in. So I think what we do here, he's going to activate this. He'll also Omen of the Sun. So I don't want to give him the option to be able to scry. I want to keep up blue mana as well. So we'll do this. He gets a card draw, but he doesn't get to, to filter. You can get your draw, but you're not getting your scry first. Yeah, that was very rude, Joe. So he's probably going to have some counters at this point. I think we've played it as like tight as we can so far. The interesting thing is if we play the Seagate out, which we probably are going to. I don't see us resolving a 7 mana sorcery at this point. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, I just I enjoy Historic Morin because the MIQ this go around happened to be historic i wanted to play in the format um, that i could like test for um but uh especially like with Kaldime coming out then we'll be playing a lot i usually don't like first set standard as much just because it's like a smaller card pool um but once called Kaldi Kaldime comes out we'll uh end up running a lot of it so notably, he doesn't have a lot of white. I want to keep this available because I can take out whatever they eat to extinction. Yeah, um, like I said, now that the format's over, and like especially because I'll have time between now and Christmas, I can uh, run some standard as well. Especially all these streamer showdowns, I'll have like one a week. So it'll give me some time to play in these. Play some brews. Part of it too is like the top decks right now. I don't enjoy food. I like rogues. But uh, food has a pretty good matchup against it. We're just going to take this hit right now. I think we're in an okay spot. We just want to get him to tap low. We're in no rush right now. Yeah, no, it's a very valid point, just with Historic. Um, I did do a couple of, like budget Historic decks, but uh, I'll get into Standard, especially once we start getting a bit more spoilers. Stop with the Sharks, Matt. They just keep coming. It's a Sharknado.
So I think we take um, we take a couple more hits here. Like he's eventually gonna try to get out one of these planeswalkers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The problem is I don't have another dispute up. One, two, yeah, he can still dispute it. I don't think there's a chance that my 7 mana draw spell will easily resolve against you right now. That's fair, I was just saying, you're playing them out, so I know you're not hitting them off of your ultimatum. With frantic inventory at this point, they're draw 3 for 2 manas. Yeah, the, uh, the inventory is looking pretty good for you, and I was saying it's a lot better in a 60 card deck than an 80 card deck. Thanks, Nikiva. Um, so I actually think we force him into the tap out here. Because then I can eat to extinction this. Oh, he lets it resolve. Or he lets it through. Let's see, just in case we get some removal. So one, two, three, four, five. So he definitely has a counter spell, so he's respecting it. Okay, that's actually really good. Smartly play around it. Two mana draw three, let's go. That is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. You respected my uh, dispute? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go. All right, let's see how good this is. This is the value flip. I like it, I like it. That felt very odd to do. Okay, so you're not supposed to have like this many. Um, so you have the counter spell up. You can also bounce my Shark Typhoon. You only get one exile. Now, do you play it into my counter spell? Yep, sure do. <laughs> The only awkward thing is you can't like tutor for a counter spell to hand. It has to be cast in that moment. Yeah, that's a good point. The uh, the soul Files game is powerful, but it does have some awkwardness to it.
So here we gonna we're gonna try to sneak Ugin in. Gives us a chance to at least sweep the board. Might be negate. You know I had to bring Ugin here. I'm not afraid of Ugin. Well, if you're top decking, guys, uh, ECDs like no tomorrow. That's right. I said, you know, I have to grab the ECD, especially since Joe took it, so you know he values it. So we need one more card in the. Ooh, that's a good draw. Well, those are both annoying. So we're going to go full control here. When the trigger goes on the stack, we'll just exile Typhoon. So we lose these frantic inventories, but at this point I think that's fine. We're going to Extinction Event after this Emiria's call. And then we can just draw another card off Tome. So this, if he has a counter, he can pay it on his turn, but then he doesn't get to Emiria's call, which I think is fine. So he resets ECD here. So I'm going to do this on his turn. So with the trigger still off the stack, I think we opt to go with the exile here, just so it leaves nothing in the graveyard for this ECD. This line is worse if he has a Planeswalker. I think we keep the Thirst. Because we're going to go Extinction Event. This gives us an answer. Even if he does have a counter here. Okay, we got the second event, which is great. So it turns out when we're just both playing removal.deck. Yeah, I was just saying, this is taking a turn. All right, we found our wing con. All right, my one solemn simulacrum versus the world. Might be good enough. So we'll just hold off here. We still have three ultimatums in the deck, a number of sharks. We, Matt's seen three ECDs, I think. Three ECDs, yeah. A Narset already, Sublime Epiphany. Probably only plays one Epiphany. Hey Kyle, how's it going? up our life a bit. So we'll attack, incentivize a shark perhaps. One, two. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do this. It's five power. If he has a shark, he'll make it big enough to block. And then I can Heartless Act it in response. That 
that's perfect. So I think we probably hold the lines here. Yeah, I'm hoping it's GG. Matt, is a four mana two two too much? When you've got a, a five mana three three, it might be. <laughs> um he's had elspeth conquers death i think we do it now that we drew the second one he might still have one left he's probably on ugin as well and i don't have a counter spell he might also be on heliod's intervention i think this turn we do it though we go for the hard cast I mean, do we? He's just taking a beating. We can just play it out slow here. We're at 22 cards in our deck. I wanted you to do that before combat. <laughs> Brutal. game joe the sharks were too much all right 1-0 1-0 against mythic matt 1-0 for you and uh yeah feel free if you want to switch it up you can or you can stick with it yeah i'm probably gonna swap just yep. for like entertainment purposes <laughs> okay so he has gruel and doom left so i think I think we go Boros. No, I think we go Teamer Ramp first. Sorry, Matt, were you going to send it or you want me to send it? You can send it. Should be coming over. I got it. Good luck. You as well, my friend. So this is a, a deck that I've been uh, heavily fine-tuning, a.k.a. you told me we're playing Tier 1 decks, so I went on Untapped and just searched for decks. Nice. Well, you can't go wrong that way. Um, so once a deck gets knocked out, um, then you're not able to switch. Uh, so he, like, Matt can't play... Uh, his Jeskai deck now. Um, technically, we're not supposed to switch, but we're doing it just for the entertainment standpoint. Sounds kind of shitty, but we'll try it out. Oh no, not the gruel. Well, I took a gamble on decks, and I guessed it's wrong. You'll love to see it. Yeah, we're ahead one. I know he has Doom Foretold, so getting ahead one is really good, just because 
Matt's very good with Doom Foretold. He made the Mythic uh, Championship last time for Zendikar, so he played in the final tournament. Okay, so here we're probably going to go another red. Now what do we need? Triple blue? Uh, it doesn't matter, we have Fable Passage. You gonna play around Mystical Dispute? Won't be quite as good in this matchup, uh, Joe. What do you think went away with Fire Prophecy? Nice. Let's say the hand was kept really contingently on it being Doom. For those just tuning in, we are in the Streamer League uh, round two against Mythic Matt. Okay, so I can do this for three. That doesn't really help. If we're getting cleaved, it's also going to suck. Um... I think we just need to do this and then try to do it for four. If he has cleave, he has cleave. Game one against Gruul's rough. We didn't really have any ramp other than this, but faster start. Okay, another love struck. Show me the cleave. I'm not a traditional gruel player, so I don't always have it. Look, I just spent all weekend playing the MIQ with gruel. You always have it. Okay, so we'll take a chance here. This is really our only line. So I don't want to say I'm banking completely on you not having a 1-1. One -one. I still like to play. Unfortunately, it's going to work out for you. <laughs> So we need a blue source off the top. Not a blue source. Dragonfire is not bad, it buys me a turn. Okay, so we can ultimatum next turn. Oh no, why did it tap my blue mana? No! I can't counter cleave now. Oh no! Well, I just got auto tappered. I like to think it doesn't matter, but if you have a uh, brazen borrower, it definitely does. I had mystical dispute. I could have countered it. Uh, that makes sense too. Yeah, that's rough. Sorry about that. I had alt in hand. I just instead of drawing into a blue source, I drew into a uh, thing. So Wilt's an interesting one here. Um, so cut this, cut a Jawari disruption. Clothis is probably too slow. 
cut a migration path, cut a... I think we need the shark typhoons. So we probably just cut the migration paths, run it like that. Into the Royal can just like tempo them for a turn. Maybe instead of Glimpse we run Migration Path. I think I want access to Wilt. Ugin will have a hard time. So I think what we do, if we lose this, we bring out the Ugin deck. Because I think that has the best chance, just having so many sweepers against them. So we're up a, a game overall. Oh, sorry, match overall. Gruel games will go quicker than the first match. Double Ugin's awkward, but we can tuck one away with Fire Prophecy, which is nice. What's happening over there? I'm trying to give you a chance. So it is an interesting line here. I think because we have our next couple turns, we do this. I actually should have waited to see if he played um, in Keeper. Okay, since we drew another one of those, Go red here, we'll get double blue. Alright, sorry about that chat. Arena decided to crash. Has your arena been kind of wonky the last few days? I feel like my arena is always kind of wonky. So here, I do need to find something. Jawari could be interesting. So I think we play this out, cycle this, potentially Jawari, one of their plays. The greatest Jawari ever. I, I was thinking about that right after I cast it. So we're going to go hard cast Typhoon here. I need to go another blue here. And then I go green next turn. You deprived me last game of doing this. Gold. I like it. I 
Again, sorry, Chad, if you got dropped off. Arena completely crashed. Seized up my OBS. Spin to win time. Yeah, it's been like, I had four crashes over the weekend. Show me the cleave. Exaxes exact too. Oh no, Matt, you had lethal the other way. I just assumed it was going to be lethal either way. Oh no, alright. Can you clear the board? <laughs> yes, yes I can. Um, how I clear the board is the question. So I can do this. That's not as much fun. I can do that. So... One, two, th sorry, sorry, just doing math, one sec. No worries, I should have taken at least a second to do that myself. So we're just going to smack in with sharks here. I can do this hold up into the royal. But like it's really not as much. How about an 8 mana make two 8 eights, deal 3 damage well, to? I'm going to drop Bone Crusher off the top and beat you. I hope you know this. I mean, I'm not playing around it. <laughs> There ain't no Aether Gust in this format. I just wanted to play another game with this sweet Gruul deck, so I'll let you <laughs> have that one, Joe. Math is for blockers. I think we run it back like this. There's the question, do we trim an Ugin? But Ugin's the biggest catch-up. If I want to squeeze in that, Instead of a cultivate, maybe. I feel like uh, we'll do a one of Clothis. Yeah, back in it. Matt had lethal there, but that makes up for us auto tapping out of the Ember Cleave, the game one. We'll see what we can go with here. He's on the play, he did Maul there. So. Ideally want a Storm's Wrath hand. If we can get one of those, we're good. Is your hand popping up on your side, or is it a glitch on my end again? It's working over here. Okay. I think this hand's actually a mulligan. We have no meaningful interaction. Oh. We got a red source here. It's pr 
probably going to be a defensive shark. Shuffler's not being kind to either of us tonight. Sorry, Jesse, that one more time. Shuffler's not being kind to either of us. Not. So we're going to take at least three points here, potentially five. I'm going to cycle this. We need to get some action here. Could, could you not? Could you not hit me for 10 on a multi five? Look, this multi five is going to get there, okay? I mulled a hand with just like all eight drops into a hand with all eight drops. <laughs> so I'm like, well, this doesn't work at all. Yeah, we're going to be a little too fast for that. Clothis doesn't really do much at this point. I need to just draw into Storm's Wrath. Well, that's a keep and a half. Good games. Fabled Passage, OP. They've got to ban it. Was that a multi of five, just two brush fires, two Fabled? I think I drew the <laughs> second brush fire in my first draw step. But yeah, it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I had the Cultivate, and then I had Clothis, but it wasn't going to do much there. All right, one one. Sent you over a challenge, Matt. Sounds good, and we're still switching decks up, right? If you like, you can run the same. At this point, strategy's up to you. Do you see it on your end? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm joining up now. Almost accidentally clicked nine lives. That would have been very rude, and I don't think I'd be able to beat it. <laughs> Actually, with this deck I might. With Gruel you could. Gruel's the only creature-based deck that can actually beat it. I just make you sack the nine lives with Doom Foretold, though. Yeah, but against Doom Foretold, I would never play out nine lives. That's a good strategy. So this deck is a control deck. Which kind of leverages Bone Crusher, Ugin, and with Iron Craig Feet you can get on early Ugin. Very good against Matt's idea of building out a big board. I'm bringing Boros to competitive standard. That's a bold move, Jeff.
So we'll go Solemn here. Against Doom, I'm not too concerned of having the Sweeper necessarily. I have Souls here for this. Iron Craig feet, we want it anyways. Look, my creatures are ready for your doom. It's free value. I wish I had it right now. think like I'm not really gunning for Ugin I think I know Matt plays some number of counters so I think we just take our time here We take two points of damage here and then just dragon fire this. He's used two Amirias, so I'm actually just gonna charge here. So I'll play this out. I have the option to animate this. If he goes shark, I can dragon fire it. Or I can just hold up this shatter, to be honest. Good call on our part. Our Ugin would have been countered. So I think here I do dragon fire. This might bait like a removal spell out of him, like another glass casket or something. This gives us a 4-4 as well, so it starts putting pressure on him. The Crawling Barons is very good in this matchup. Then we get like Phoenix of Ash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're short of line. Ox of Osgana. Hmm. You should definitely get rid of the Shadow of the Sky. Definitely the most <laughs> impactful card against us. Thanks, Titans. I'm trying to avenge your uh, round one loss. Why does it keep going that? Well, you get to, oh, you're just scouting the competition then if you're fighting the loser. Well, 
two of my deck are meme decks. I don't know if you saw the Salt Eye one from match one. And now my Boros control deck. So we'll charge this up. I'm probably going to just aux this turn, to be honest. Blue players in Embercleave math. Just hit him for a lot here. Because then I could stomp him. I like the double exile of Ugin just to make sure he's really gone. Can't let him come back. Is Crawling Barons just like the scariest card for your deck? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> I was trying to figure out if I'm playing mandates in this version, I don't remember. <laughs> Thanks Titans. I, I gotta keep the hair out of my face. It's getting way too long now. So Matt's trying to dig here. We probably have this locked up, to be honest. If he would need exactly eliminate, because I have the Soul Seer for this. Um, so in this matchup, I want all my Conqueror's Deaths, I want my Heliod's Intervention, Shredded Sails is actually decent here, because I know he does bring in some other stuff, he has the, it also gets rid of like the caskets and stuff, so Birth of Milady's could come out, uh, Soul Seer was fine, can get rid of the Shatters, Could trim five cards to cut. Probably, honestly, just the Iron Craig feat. He's going to bring in Counter Magic, and I'm less concerned with that. Thanks, Makivo, for stopping by. Have a great Christmas. I should be on more like next week with like work trimming down. Um, do I want Soul Seer over Dragon Fire? Is a real question. Probably not. Falcon Awakenings gas. Appreciate it as always those who swing are swinging by. This hand's fine. So generally you want to get this down as early as possible. Oh, Matt's on the golden egg. Play this out next turn. Did you switch off Golden Egg and then come back to it, or were you always on the two copies? I've always been on Golden Egg. I usually play uh, four copies. I had to go down to two when I was playing the uh, Conundrum for the championship, but I love Golden Egg.
think we're okay for lines right now. I'm doing this just because he's going to dress me. Love the three mana delayed duress. Three mana delayed duress, too strong. Take my Ugin. You trying to trick me there, Joe? You know I'm gonna draw Iron Craig feet off the top next turn then. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> So he does have blue mana through the golden egg if needed. We'll draw a card here and then I'm going to start charging up this Barons. Pretty decent afterwards. Hmm. Phoenix of Ash is interesting. I don't think I want it this turn per se because I want to be able to hold up this for doom because this might be the turn that Matt goes for doom foretold this is also an Elspeth Conquer's death target which I'm not in love with Joe, we were wondering if I had asked nicely, would you have made Crawling Barons a creature in response to Elspeth's Nightmare? Uh, I could have, but I just wanted to make a game of it. Boros is handicapped enough by just being Boros. That is fair. All right, I'm going to give you another choice. Do you want my Ugin? This time I might take it. Surprisingly, there's quite a lot of card draw right now in Boros to play control. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm pretty much keeping up card advantage with you, and you've Cast a Treacherous Blessing, a uh, Golden Egg, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, Tome does some work. It's just uh, obviously a slower card. Well, that's some value. And you, I lose my Phoenix. Yeah, this was a good Yorian. So here, did I have enough for Phoenix? No. I can play this out, but it's pretty low value. 
I think we just want to set up if they do have Doom. So we'll give Matt the choice here. He's probably going to take Heliod's intervention. You need to go for the value and take my land. Nah. So we can escape this turn now. He could have a counter spell. Probably fine at this. If he sharks, I can trade with it. It's not great, but... Play that tapped. Guess I could have shocked and then pumped, but it's fine. I want to use this anyways now. He's getting to the point where he could dance of the mance. So dance of the mance is potentially a reason. Are we dancing? You know it. Problem is, I'm still short a mana. And then he gets triple discard. I just drew Ugin, but I'm one mana short. Oh man. <laughs> and you're gonna triple thought seize me. So I should have two Ugins left in the deck. So we just hope for one of our Ugins. We can trade with two. So I can trade with the Shark Typhoon, which you probably won't attack with. So we'll probably get rid of the egg because it could gain him life. We're still gonna try. We got one more Ugin. Doing this because Ugin doesn't kill it. Top deck Ugin, let's go. Not gonna be good enough this time. <laughs> well, I top deck Dugan. <laughs> I had my opening. Good, ge good games. You called it though. You did call for the Ugin. See, I shuffled my deck in a certain way. It was a good shuffling, but didn't quite get there. Um, so Phoenix, if he's playing that many Nightmares, is probably not the best. So let's maybe go up a Chandra. Um, I think I kind of value the two Shatters. Sorry, you weren't supposed to hear that. I'll keep that into consideration. You got to look at all of them. <laughs> I 
I can't make this day. I uh, had to quickly throw my hair out. And uh, I didn't have a headband or anything, so this is what's happened. The COVID man bun. My uh, chat's making fun of my hair, my uh, man bun. Joe's chat, that's, that's very rude. Joe's worked on that man bun for a long time. Oh no, it's fine, I can make this day. My wife absolutely hates my hair. I uh, I streamed the MIQ this morning early. I got I made day two and I wasn't expecting it, so doing two back to back longer streams. Um I think we keep this. It's got curves. Real decks have curves. Ah, uh, so no mill decks here today. I'm playing a couple brews. So is Matt. Um, I think we're okay for lands at this point. I'm just gonna get this down now. Preemptive dance target. See, you didn't like the uh, Lara Dance in the Man's last game. I was like, right before you cast it, I'm like, well, at this point, really the only thing that gets him out of it is Dance of the Man's. Well, I'm making your Elspeth's Nightmare Chapter 1 useful this game. I appreciate that. So we need another white source here. He's gonna take our Chandra. I needed one more turn. Chandra's a nice one. Comes in versus control. I'd be totally upset if you killed my Solemn, by the way. I'm sure you would. Not looking too hot in this game. Uh, Shatter Skull in this deck's actually pretty good because we have like Iron Craig feet to pump into mana and we're kind of a bigger mana deck. Um, it's pretty much base red, so it's just another spell in this deck. That's why we're playing it. Bold strategy with the face-up uh, Soul Seer. Yeah, we just spent uh, a good 45 seconds uh, talking about it on chat. Now the question is, if I attacked into with Solemn, would you have blocked? That's a good question. I probably would have. I can't pass up on eating a creature. Yeah, pretty much that. Kill it before it gains the life. That was very rude of you. Yeah, I have a pretty sweet curve this game. I don't think I particularly care about this. 
Because, like, I have this. I can exile his graveyard. If needed, I have another land. It's just it opens him up to being able to conquer his death by conquer's death, and I don't have anything in the graveyard right now. I'll take an ox. So we're going to go full control here. We're going to exile here. Well, I just don't want it to come back as a 4-5 with lifelink. If I had, like, a sweeper in hand, I would, but we have this for, like, Yorian. Take the 4 here, see what he does. Okay, so we'll conquer his death here. kind of just want to get this out of my hand then I can ox if he has a counter here then we're pretty much dead I have four crawling barons in this deck and there's two turns where I couldn't do anything and it's just like how much mana I could have sunk into it yeah crawling barons is definitely your best cardio set So the nice thing is we put up a tax on our opponent here. We can draw like Ugin, then Ox. Gets to mill it, we can try to bring it back. It's actually interesting. Look at this Boros value. I can't really beat the sharks once they get going. We got Soul Seer, it's fine. We also have a shat we have two shatters. You are into hand. Even Ugin doesn't do it. Don't think we have anything. Do you have a counter for the Soul Seer? Oh, I've got two answers to the Soul Seer. GG's. Good games. All right, last one up. We're down now. It's all up to the ultimatums. I'm just going to reset my client really quick, Matt, so it doesn't crash. Sounds good. Just challenge you when you're back on. So we got one more. Yeah. Yeah. So that Boros deck's very, very good against creature decks. It's awful against permission. 
Um, it's, it, depending. If we have the Crawling Barons, then we're fine, but we saw probably about half of our deck there and never got Crawling Barons. Elspeth's Nightmare really wrecks the deck. Challenge sent over. I got it. Good luck. You as well. Now you know all my surprise elements, though, with this deck. I know. It'll be even better for me the uh, second time through it. I know all the ultimatum targets. Sand some all again. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. So in the dark... Oh, he's on Yorian, so we're less inclined for the Heartless Act game one. The Wilt has a lot more value. I think what we do is scry on one. Um, I think we get those going. That seems reasonable. So I'll shock in this next turn. Life total is not super relevant in this game. He's going to beat us by a lot. Did Seagate just, like, really stutter your screen by any chance? Oh, that wasn't too bad over here. My computer, like, died on it. <laughs> just another reason not to play Seagate Restoration, Joe. I need lands that can also be Tutor Bola spells. So, Elspeth's Nightmare is... Quite reasonable in this matchup. So I'm going to do this. He can Skyclave Apparition it, but then that gives me a target for Nightmare. If not, it's more fodder for his Doom Foretold. see how this goes for those tuning in we are playing streamer showdown i am playing fellow content creator mythic matt um he you'll hear his voice sparingly through the uh discord chat um he's currently up two games to one it's best of five so if he wins this he still has elspeth's sorry esper doom foretold and gruel adventures locked in I think we just want the card draw from this. Because I don't know what color I want yet. I think we just do this. You can doom. You can get rid of one of these. So I need triple green, which we have. Triple blue. I have. We'll just get a block here. Pass turn. Sorry, one sec. Why well, I gotta take my wilt? I can't have you interfering with my Doom Foretold plan. So here we'll go, because we have black, black. So let's go another black here. Another inventory is actually really nice. Well, 
wanted to see if we hit. I don't even know what we would hit there. Ooh. Drawing three of these in a row was pretty nice. I'm going to have to put a stop to that last one. Take a draw here. Solemn's actually really nice as well. Gives us some more fodder. If we can like wait out this doom foretold. So I think we do this, just get another land. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So depending on how he taps out here, we can try to sneak down this ultimatum. We already lost our wilt and I can't get it back. We could see gate restoration. I think we just discard the land here. How does it feel, Matt? like my own medicine one bit. So we'll do extinction event here. Probably Gargaroth and Shark Typhoon. Exiling his graveyard's huge here, as long as we can dodge one turn. Dealer's choice. Yeah, this is a rough choice. <laughs> So I'm gonna hold this to cycle. No dance, no Elspeth conquers death one turn. Yeah, you're gonna dodge it for now. So here we'll cycle. We're both kind of top decking, so it's really just who's going to top deck better. You know things are bad when you just run out the sky claim into nothing. Oh, 
Oh no, my top deck was just as bad as yours. Very equivalent power level. <laughs> It's unfortunate I can't search you again with it. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. Got there. Duress. Cling to dust. Negates disputes. I don't think we... Okay, let's see what we cut here. Actually, Cure our best of Sea Gods pretty good here. Because it gets around the Doom Foretold. Uh, we want the Wilts. We can get rid of the Eliminates. This is like Duress, and it gives me something to sack. Uh, this is like super awkward. I think we get rid of Blood Chief's Thirst here. Can get rid of Cultivate. The games will go long. I want all my like permission. Probably just get rid of Heartless Act to be honest. We have Murderous Rider. You take Extinction as targeted removal. Whatever. Let's go 61 cards. It turns out when you brew a deck full of one of uh, it makes sideboarding very much a fun or ordeal. <laughs> that does sound like a fun <laughs> exercise. When you have an 80 card deck, sideboarding is also kind of interesting. So, I think we scry on one. I don't want any more lands right now. Probably want to hit like Doom Foretold here. Yeah, you can you can go away. Play this tap next turn. Keep Balaget as long as possible if we don't need it. We really want to take them off curve here. See what we can do to attack him. Cling to dust is actually really nice as well. So he has negates. Next turn, I get Elspeth's Knight. Okay, so that's actually pretty good because I get my Nightmare down before he does. So I can take his Doom Foretold. Um, so we do this for blue. Three mana to rest, let's go. I don't think you're getting a chance to three mana to rest us. It's fine. I get the doom out of your hand. Yeah, I guess this basically accomplishes the same thing. Mm. So we want probably... I'm probably just going to be playing this out. So... So we need... Actually, we need another green. Green, 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 black, black, blue. So we're still one mana short. It's actually pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. 
so I can Solemn again, or I can hold up Negate. But if he's aware of Negate, then he does that. Probably takes the Shark Typhoon, so I think we just get ahead on mana and set ourselves up. I do have Kling here, which can be relevant. We're probably going to cycle this Kling. It's an interesting hand. Yeah, it's a pretty solid one. Hey, Dora, nice. How's it going? Thanks for stopping by. This is a Sultai Ultimatum deck in standard, playing Streamer Showdown against fellow streamer Mythic Matt. I think we go for the cycle here. It's going to be Typhoon on his part. Ah, no, actually. We're going to wait. This pops off. don't want to play into it right now so because I don't want to necessarily I think we just hold off because I could have clinged but then the cling gets exiled by Elspeth's nightmare which I'm not that interested in So let this get exiled. That's fine. I do have the option of my own shark here, which I'm probably gonna do if he attacks in. I'll probably take the four this turn, shark on my end step. Our life total is not really in huge jeopardy. I wanna be able to hold up permission as much as possible at this point. Our shark is bigger. I need to try this deck in Historic, see how it goes, you can get Omniscience. I don't like that. <laughs> Still in a decent spot to race. Actually, just gonna play this as a land. I don't, I'm not really interested in tapping out, and I could cycle this Trinum. Probably. Decent standing here. He just goes Yori into hand, then I'm pretty happy. Let's get rid of the Shark Typhoon. We're loaded with permission, which I'm very happy about. Neither of us have creatures.
So I think we do that trade. It just puts them on a faster clock. And then this also means that my cling to dust is active, so I can draw another card on my end step. That was a very timely draw of a counter spell. need to find something now. We'll cling here. He does get to card draw. Oh, that's a little aggressive. So we'll do this. This might be a removal spell that he has. Or he's trying to dig for a removal spell. If it's a land, it might be that he has like Yorian, but well, drawing two lands there was not what we wanted. I don't think we want duress at this junction of the game. Action. Like, I feel like he has to all out attack here, but he might play it safe over two turns. If he gives us another turn, then it bodes well for us. Drew like six lines in a row. That was really rough. <laughs> mm. Probably get rid of Gargaroth. Like Gargaroth is a tutorable, so I don't mind it. Get rid of that, it gets hit by Mystical Dispute. Get rid of Seagate Restoration. All right, it's feeling good there, but we just never hit our, uh, we needed like any spell really. Like we had all reactive spells, but if we had any kind of removal. An extinction event would have helped there. Just anything to just interact with his board for one turn. In retrospect, if we negated the negate, then we would have had the spewed up for Yorian. But we didn't know he had Yorian in hand. Okay, we're on the play. We have no lines. Oh my god. Mm. Just cycle this for one. It replaces itself. Gives me a blocker. I cut one spell land and instantly just don't see any lands in two hands. Shuffled really trying to punish you. Negate, Treacherous, Elspeth, Elspeth. 
the way our hands going negate doesn't really do much I guess Elspeths are kind of redundant with each other, so let's just get rid of that. I think what it really is, Joe, is you broke standard with the Sultai Ultimatum list, so it knew it had to handicap you to make this interesting. No, I think I just metagamed it too much. I knew for sure you'd be on Doom, so I tweaked the list a bit before, like regardless of what other decks you played. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm like, I can beat creature decks. Doom is in your hands is the one I was worried about. I do love my S for Doom. So we'll cycle here, not too much in the way. We we'll probably lost this just by mulling to five. This is an attrition based matchup. So being down two resources when Matt's just gonna draw three is a tad rough. We need to hit line drops. That wasn't a line drop. Better play around those double heartless acts. Yeah, they're uh, they're not gonna be at their best with my current hand. Well, the more stuff we kind of. It gets us closer here. We're kind of at it like an odd situation where we both need lands and spells. I guess chaining together some frantic inventories isn't too bad. It's just Matt here. I'll pick apart our hand. And there goes our claim. Not too hot here. No pressure. Two lands off ultimatum, it's pretty much, but like at this point, I'm just assuming he has all the permission in the world. You don't even respect the double heartless act enough to tap out. I was just saying, the only thing that possibly punishes us is probably Ashiok, and even that's not that scary. Now you can put those things to use. Just one. Try to give me a five turn clock at least. I appreciate <laughs> that. I'm in the envious position of needing both lands and spells. Multi five uh, really kind of uh, takes the, the wind out of your sails. 
Yeah, I was just saying, and your deck probably does not unmulligan particularly well because you have a lot of expensive spells. Most of the curve is relatively cheap. There's only like, because it's all one ofs other than Shark Typhoon, which is often just cycled anyways. Okay, that makes sense. But like my problem here is like even if I top deck ultimatum and like I had that duress pop off, I was still short of land. And that's why we're gonna run out this Yorian. We are all but done here. Matt's drawn probably like nine extra cards at this point. Aha! <laughs> Debate encountering this. I might just let you stop our doom. But then I can resolve my... Looks at deckless quickly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you have two counters in hand? I do. Okay, I'm just going to continue. Three. <laughs> well, I just want to see if I top deck the ultimatum. Sounds good. <laughs> Nope, Tome. Sh Shuffler's rigged. Uh, Gotta show you, I wasn't bluffing. Oh no, I, I pretty much knew this game was over. Good games, Matt. Yeah, good games. The Mola 5 is really tough, uh, but definitely some interesting ones and super cool decks. Thank you. I was, uh, I hadn't played Rogues in a while, so I didn't want to just pick it up. I played like two of these yes er, on Friday for round one. Yeah, how did your round one uh, go? Obviously you won. Uh, uh, the score. How did you play? 3-1. So I played um, the Boros deck, the Saltai deck, and then Blue-White Blink. So like the original Yorian kind of style pile, where you just like have all the creatures, like Charming Prince loops. But with like Omen of the Sun, uh, Heliod's Punishment was actually really good, just to slow down the aggressive decks. That's pretty cool. I know that's a, like a really cool piece of tech for the historic auras decks because it triggers their like aura draws and still like does everything they needed to do. Yeah, with auras, you really just want to slow them down a turn or two oftentimes, especially with like Uro or something. Anyways, yeah, sure. thank well, you. Well played and uh, good luck in the, the other bracket. Hopefully I see you again in the finals. Yeah, well, I'm playing Titans, so we'll see. I'll, uh, I'll send over the folks to tune in. I'm going to be wrapping yeah, up. Good. I'm going to stream for a little bit longer up to my normal start time at least and uh, then head out. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the match. It's super fun, and I can't wait to see you play Titan Smash. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Have a good one. You too. Well, thank you everyone for stopping by. Uh, unfortunately, our brews couldn't get us there. Um, I still really like this Saltai deck. It's kind of my pet deck. Um, but I will send everyone over to Mythic Matt. If you haven't done so, do check him out. Great streamer. And uh, tune in next time. Appreciate it. all the support this weekend, honestly, between MIQ and everything. It's been a great weekend for Magic. Um, stay safe out there. And with the holidays, we will uh, be streaming some more. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great one.